This section of Project 1 is going to focus on the addition of steel columns, uh, the dimensions for those, and some wood structural elements. Uh, the first part of the project that you hopefully just completed uh, was looking at the foundation plan, which was just a monolithic slab, uh, and some of the details that went along with that. And so now we're going to add to that. We're going to do it as, as though we were building it, basically. So we've got the slab board. Now we're going to go back and put some uh, other elements on it. Uh, some of this is uh, added after the fact, and some of it actually would have been done while the concrete was being poured, and I'll point that out as we go and why. Uh, but for the most part, we're going to look at things that are now added to what we've already done. And that's the way this project's going to go. Uh, we're going to have already done concrete, of course. Now we're going to look at some ele other elements for the foundation. Uh, the next thing we'll look at is the roof framing and how it all goes together. And that's going to really be the end of Project 1. Uh, and then the other projects we'll do will be the same. We're going to start at the bottom and work our way up. <clears throat> so to kind of focus in on what we're looking at here, this is just the foundation plan. Uh, same as you had before. Um, so you're going to have the brick ledge running on the outside. And again, that goes back to the details. These two lines represent the outside edge of the footing, the outside edge of the slab. The space in between is the brick ledge where the brick rests on the outside of the building. These are the doorways. There's some little uh, stoops or porches out here. Uh, this is, again, what we call an arrival hood. It's just a covered area to park your car to go in. Uh, handicap ramps. This is a little concrete island that's going to hold up the other side of the um, arrival hood or the roof. And on the other projects, I'm going to try to have some architectural drawings to show you ahead of time as well, so you can kind of have an idea of what we're looking at. This one I wanted to use because it's pretty simple, um, but gets a lot across to you as far as structural plans, but I didn't have the architectural set for it. So sorry about that, but we'll do better next time. And then this is the main arrival hood out front. You can see it's a little bigger, <clears throat> but again, cars would pass through here, drop off, go in. So this is like a basically a porch area. These are two concrete islands, is what we call them, that hold up the columns that support the roof. Uh, the rest of it's just uh, normal slab, besides the other two little porches in the back. Uh, what we're going to add to it now, like I said, is going to be columns and what we call a wood shear wall. Okay, um, For the columns, it's pretty simple. Um, these little squares here are going to represent the steel columns. And then the dimensions, of course, telling you where to locate the columns. So this would be the edge of the slab, seven feet off. This is a center line telling you it's going through the center of the columns. So seven feet off is the center line. One foot out from that should be the edge of the slab. One foot over to the center line, seven feet over to the center line, one foot to the edge of the slab. Uh, the C4s are referencing you to a column schedule. These two columns are C4s or columns number column fours. So what we want to look at is right down here below it. And this could be placed in different places on different sets of plans. Uh, this one, they just happen to list it. It's not really in a title block that says column schedule or anything like that. Uh, they just have them listed. So this particular column is C4. So a C4 is a 4x4 four four wood column with a Simpson standoff base. And we'll talk about that here in just a second. But that's the type of column this is. Now these other columns, you can see these are C4s. All the small ones are C4s on these small porches. When you get over here, you can see we have C2s. All of these are C2s. When we get over here, we have all C1s. And that's based on the, the loads they're carrying. So based on how much load I have above it, you know, weight coming down on it, the, the column sizes are different. And we'll talk about that in bits and pieces as we go. The C2s are 6 by 6 by 3 8 tube, tube steel columns. That's the TS, tube steel. And a C1 is an 8 by 8, 3 8 inch tube steel column. Now remember, thinking back to construction materials, tube steel doesn't necessarily mean it's a tube. We think of a tube as a circle. These are actually, if you look at them, they're actually more square in nature. 6x6 six six or 8x8, eight eight, but it's called tube steel. The corners are rounded just a little bit. They're not perfectly uh, square, but they're not round at the same time. And then the designations, if 
you remember right um, when it says 8 by 8 that's the outside the outside dimensions the 3 8 is the thickness of the steel or the thickness of the wall itself of the uh, column so it's 8 by 8 or 6 by 6 to the outside then we got 3 8 inch thick steel creating the actual column itself and then it's hollow on the inside but they're all referred to as tube steel so based on what designation it has that's the size column we want to put in there okay uh, but that's all there is to the to the columns uh, same thing on these arrival hoods drop off areas edge of the slab dimension to the center line center line to center line and just kind of work our way around uh, that tells you how far off it is and that's going to be the same for every for everyone <clears throat> this particular set of plans does not have uh, column grids like we spoke of earlier in the print reading uh, only because there's only a few and they're all on the outside so they just give strict dimensions uh, it has nothing to do with uh, a column grid okay uh, and you can see you know it looks kind of like you're missing a dimension right here telling you how far to come off of this but it's coming from the edge of the slab back so from the, this edge of the slab we're coming back two feet and then from the center of this we're going up 24 feet so uh, ignore these similar uh, text items right here they just were left over I forgot to turn that layer off uh, from the previous plan so ignore those but that's pretty simple um, and then to focus in on the wood just for a second you have what we're calling plywood sheathing shear walls um, what these are are built up walls basically to help strengthen the, the, the whole structure these are on the corners and then if you look at the rest of the building you have some short sections here 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 and here the placement of them could be for different reasons these are on the, most of the time you'll see them on a corner because it's solidifying that corner and we'll talk a lot about a shear wall here in just a second um, but in this case we have them around the outside because of window placement um, a lot of these areas like I said I don't have the architectural plans for this one but there's large banks of windows on either side and so since there's large banks of windows there's not a lot of wood in the wall itself and so they'll have these uh, shear walls which are just beefed up walls in between to strengthen that whole wall okay so that's kind of what we're looking at and then this detail is for that particular shear wall it's just telling you how it's made up it's just a basically it's a little wall section or a wall elevation showing you uh, what you need to know about it uh, anchor bolts size of the studs plywood thickness on it uh, this is a horizontal two by six sorry about that um, a lot of notes about it height of this wall this is an eight foot regular eight foot wall and there's a little two foot section above it so we have ten foot ceilings inside the building um, where it has this little detail here this is actually the the size of the anchor bolt they're eight inches vertical two inches on the small leg so eight inches two inches right there um, and you have to do nail spacing notes when you do shear walls so where the plywood is nailed into the stud they have to be no more than six inches apart on the internal parts of it um, right here you can see it's got notes going all through here it has two inch nail spacing at the perimeters of each sheet of plywood and six inch on the internal so around the perimeters we have to have two inch nails so every two inches you're going to have a nail and here every six inches so there's a lot of and there's some more notes right here uh, there's a lot of particulars when it comes to shear walls they have to be designed uh, so a lot of time that is left up to the engineer to do uh, but this is the detail depicting how these particular shear walls are going to have to be built um, so that's what's going on when you see this little pattern and it actually says that right here shown on the plan as this um, but that's all there is to add to it and so what I'm going to do now is explain in a little more detail what some of these notes mean uh, as far as the sense and standoff bases and the shear walls.